Good evening and welcome to St Gabriel's Church for our community carol service. We're here but most of the community are at home and we're hoping that you'll all sing along and be a part of it tonight. We're going to begin with a very traditional opening carol for a carol service, once in Royal David City. If you've got the Bethlehem carol sheet, it's number 19, once in Royal David City. Traditionally, the choir would sing the first verse of this as they're processing in to the church. Well, I'm going to sing the first verse. I hope you'll sing the first verse with me. And then we'll have to imagine the choir taking their places and singing sweetly. You will be the choir tonight. So, let's begin. Joyful singing of carols. 
As we gather together in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save. For the church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. For the world, which is already Christ's, that all its peoples may recognise their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere. And for all in special need. Especially tonight we remember those suffering through the COVID-19 pandemic. But all the sick people, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved. That the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. We commend all whom we love or who have asked for our prayers to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father as we say together the prayer that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is the story of the fall. That evening they heard the Lord God walking in the garden, and they hid from him among the trees. But the Lord God called out to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat? The man answered, The woman you put here with me gave me the fruit, and I ate it. The Lord God asked the woman, Why did you do this? She replied, The snake tricked me into eating it. Then the Lord God said to the snake, You will be punished for this. You alone of all the animals must bear this curse. From now on you will crawl on your belly, and you will have to eat dust as long as you live. I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head, and you will bite her offspring's heel. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is the promise to Abraham. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. I make a vow by my own name, the Lord is speaking that I will richly bless you. Because you did this and did not keep back your only son from me, I promise that I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky or grains of sand along the seashore. Your descendants will conquer their enemies. All nations will ask me to bless them as I have blessed your descendants, all because you obeyed my command. Here
We're going to sing again. Um, if, again, if you have the Bethlehem Carol sheet, it's number 11. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And I think on our wonderful machine, uh, we have a bonus verse. So if that's the case, we'll sing verse 1 again.
just heard the prophecy of the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem, and that's what we're going to sing about. Number one on the sheet, A Little Town of Bethlehem. The next reading is from the New Testament part of the Church Bible, uh, and it's called The Annunciation to Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, 
I'm a virgin. How can this be? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth, it is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For is not, there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. Here endeth the reason, reading. Our next reading, the birth of Jesus Christ. This was how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a man who always did what was right, but he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly. So he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Here endeth the lesson. Thank you very much, Dory and Chris. Our next carol is Angels from the Realms of Glory, number 18 on the ship.
brings the next part of the story to us. The shepherds and the angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I'm here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. Here ends the reading. Now, we're going to sing probably one of the most famous Christmas carols of all time. And uh, it's number six, Away in a Manger.
Derek's going to read the story of the wise men to us. Wise men led by a star to Jesus. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the star came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search of the child, and when you find him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother and Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Sarah. Now, number 10 from your sheets. Hark the Herald Major Sing.
In the beginning, the Word already existed, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world. And though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. Here ends the reading. going to sing number 13, Silent Night.
thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you've been standing to sing, please be seated. And hopefully some words of wisdom. Well, actually, first of all, I'm going to read you a little bit of a story. This is uh, from the Ionic community in Scotland. And it's about a shepherd. At the time of Jesus' birth, shepherding was not the romantic profession it is often presumed to be. It meant staying awake at night to ward off wolves or thieves. It also meant being unable to attend every religious service if a deputy could not be found. It is therefore interesting that the first people to hear of God's great gift were those who would not always be in church. Uh, um, it's difficult to explain, Mr. Cohen. Well, I, I can well understand why you're angry. I mean to say, I would be angry too if I were in your position. I know I've only been working with you for a week, but I can assure you, it's not the kind of thing I do often. I always stay on the job. But what I've said is perfectly true. You can ask Larry or Samuel. Admittedly, it does seem a bit incredible. I mean, there were noises in the sky. Musical noises. And yes, we did go to the village, um, just the three of us. And there was a baby, a boy. And we weren't drunk, just a bit emotional. Uh, okay, that doesn't explain where the sheep got to. I know it's highly unusual for Goldberg the Butcher to be selling land at bargain prices, but Mr. Cohen, there are some things in life more important than sheep. No, I don't want to go into the priesthood. I want to be a shepherd. But shepherds can believe in God too, can't they? I wonder. If there had been a coronavirus outbreak in 6 BC, the census wouldn't have taken place. If Nazareth had been in tier 4, Mary and Joseph would have been prevented from travelling and they wouldn't have been able to go to Bethlehem. Unless, of course, they already formed a bubble with some people 80 miles in the south. If the Christmas story had not happened, I think we would be in a far worse place than we would be if we were in lockdown. But the wonderful thing is the Christmas story did take place against all the odds. And actually it would take place in December 2020 during tier four if that what God wanted to happen. If it was his will, it would happen. So now, we're being told that Christmas has been cancelled this year. Well, brothers and sisters, my message is Christmas has not been cancelled. It's never been cancelled. Now, commercial Christmas may have gone because all the shops have closed down and non-essential things like Christmas presents are not allowed to be sold. Mind you, it may not have occurred to anybody that all those non-essential Christmas presents were probably bought in September anyway. Family Christmas is heavily restricted or it has been abolished. We've been told we can't meet up with people. Churches may be closed, mainly because we can't get the amount of people into them that we really want to. But Jesus is still born. Jesus is still at the heart of Christmas. Jesus is still, or will be, on Christmas night in our little stable because he will be born and he will be there. That's something that you can't cancel, something that you can't take away. Jesus is in the hearts and lives of all that believe in him. Jesus is walking alongside every single person in the world. Problem is, most of them don't realize he's there. And when the government canceled Christmas, People start shouting and screaming, 
but they don't realise that the government can't cancel Jesus. Jesus is there. Jesus is the reason for Christmas. And we will continue to celebrate his birth. So thank God for Christmas, or officially, thank God for Christ Mass. Jesus comes into our world. Jesus is born and laid in a manger because there was no room for him anywhere else. Jesus grows up. Jesus takes on the world. Jesus dies on the cross to take away all the sin and wrong and rubbish and pain of the world. Jesus rises from the dead, never to die again, to offer us the gift of eternal life. No pandemic can change that. No plague can stop the message from spreading to every corner of the world. And no government restrictions can stop God's Holy Spirit working in our lives and working in the lives of all the people who will believe because they hear the gospel and they hear the Christmas message and they want to be a part of it. So I know we're not moving very far this Christmas. We're not going out. We're not mixing with lots of different people. We can't have our midnight communion service here in church because we wouldn't be allowed to have the amount of people in here that we would love to have. But that doesn't mean that Christmas has stopped. It's very much around, it's very much a part of everything. We just need to see it. If you get a chance this Christmas, just spend a few moments making room in your life and in your heart for Jesus. Make a special place in your celebrations to just spend five minutes thinking about what Christmas is really about. Forget all the other nonsense. Yes, it's all gone, but why not just postpone it? I'm perfectly happy to have Christmas in March or April or July if, uh, if everything's come back to normal. Then fine, do all the bits and pieces we want to do. But on the 25th of December, this year, remember Jesus being born and make room for him in your heart. This is a very ancient song that I learned at Sunday school so many years ago, but it stuck with me and it's simply called No Room.
let's finish our service. Well, we'll finish with a blessing in a moment, but we'll finish by singing number 12, O Come, All Ye Faith. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all.